This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morris, and today we are checking out NDIF, a command inside of NMAP, and also some of your tips. So first off, NDIF. This is a tool that allows you to compare two XML output files made by NMAP, and you can see the differences between a couple of different outputs. So remember episode 103? That is where I showed you exactly how to output to an XML file, and you can even see how to look at it on your command line. To use it, all you have to type in is NDIF, and then whatever your XML files are called. So I created two earlier, and I'm not gonna show you how to do those because we already showed you in a past episode. So you do test1.xml and then test2.xml or whatever the name of your two files are. You hit enter and you get some interesting output. So the minus sign that you see on some of these lines indicate the first of the two files. So if I scroll up just a little bit, I'll see that the first of the files is test1, the minus sign is 4.74, that is test1. So all of those are for test1, and then test2 is the plus signs. So the plus sign is for the second file that you did. Now you'll see all the differences between these two. So if there is a difference, you'll see minus nmap for the first one plus nmap for the second one, and so on and so forth. Now you can also use tacv for, for verbose with ndiff as well. If you want to do that, it would look like such. ndiff tacv test1.xml and test2.xml. Hit enter and it'll show you a verbose output. Now with tacv, I'm not gonna see much of a difference with these two commands that I put in, the test1 and test2 files, because there isn't much of a verbosity difference after I do that. Now if you want to, you can also type in ndiff tac tac xml and then your two files. This is going to show you the xml output on your screen and then you can save that information into a new xml file if you wanted to. You can also mess with a scan while it is scanning as well. Uh, this was just a little tip that I wanted to add into today's episode. For example, I could type in nmap 10.73.1.0 So a couple of the different options that you can add in while you have a script running in the background are you could choose, let me run that again, you can choose V to show you a verbosity increase while it is running. You can also hit D to show you debugging. You can type P as well to see packet tracing or you can hit a question mark and that will actually show you a help menu for all of those different options. Now this is called runtime interaction and you can see all that crazy information going on in the background. Now as soon as it is done, you'll have plenty of information to see once you are finished. Now we'll be right back with your feedback after the break. The Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all of your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB rubber ducky, which looks like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard. It can type scripts into a computer ridiculously quickly, like this week's favorite from Den Devenv. <laughs> this is a very simple FTP script that you can use for Windows boxes. Now, of course, we couldn't do this show without your support, so we would like to thank you with something special. Use the coupon code SNUBS with any order from the Hack Shop for your very own signed Hack Tip stickers. So cool, and thank you so much for supporting the show. We're back, and now it's time for a couple of really good tips from you guys, from our viewers. So thank you so much, first off, for sending in your submissions. Let's go ahead and start with Matt. He says, I figured I would point out the tool NCAT, which typically comes with NMAP from the repositories. The nice thing about this version is that it has two new options, tac tac receive only and tac tac send only. They are useful for one-way transfers since by default, Netcat is two ways. The thing is that even if Netcat is finished receiving or sending data, it will st still keep the connection open for the other direction. With the options mentioned above, once the file is sent or received, it will shut down so that you don't have to hit Control-C either. 
Just thought you might find that useful. And I did, thank you so much, Matt. I know we've been done with the Netcat series for a little while now, but hey, I really like your feedback. So thank you so much. And I know not everybody is caught up with the show, so I appreciate it. And our next one comes from Sergi. He said that you had trouble getting DNS resolution to work when you were scanning your 10.73 network. Yes, that is true. I had so much trouble with that. And it still happens with this. Luckily, he says that there is nothing wrong with your la Linux laptop. If you were to use your ISP's DNS server, it wouldn't be able to resolve these addresses since the 10.x block of IPs is a private range and can only exist behind a firewall on a home or a business network. None of the public DNS servers would know what to do with 10.x addresses. Another way to resolve IP address would be to use local host files, which would be in slash etc or etsy slash hosts on Linux. This is actually the first place where your computer looks to resolve an IP address. You would have to type each existing host IP in your 10.73 network and its host name. If there is nothing in slash etsy slash host, your laptop moves on to DNS servers to get name resolution. DNS servers are specified in slash etsy slash resolve.con file, but it doesn't look like you are running your own internal DNS server on the Hack5 network, so the lookup on your ISP server, which you probably get from DHCP, fails and Nmap only shows IPs but no names. Thank you so much, Sergi. That was really helpful. I was very confused as far as why my DNS server wasn't looking up everything correctly, and that totally points it out for me. So it, it completely makes sense, and I'm surprised I didn't think about that first. So thank you. And our third message comes from Doomoot T6P, and I probably totally pronounced that wrong, but you have a crazy screen name, so thank you. Anyway, he said, I wanted to point out that the service column will show a name based on the port. So if you change your SSH server to port 666, a map will show that Doom is running. I'm really proud for discovering this myself after an hour of searching why my Linux has a Windows service. That's awesome. I love Easter eggs. Thank you so much for setting those different pinpoints in. Of course, you can always let me know what you think. This is the end of our network mapping uh, segment in series. So I want to know what you guys thought. You can email us tips at hack5.org and I'm going to move on next week to Maltigo. Now I know that you guys have probably check this out in the past if you haven't yet. Well, I haven't either. So I'm really looking forward to checking out and going through everything from how does the GUI work to how to collect my own data. Yay! It's going to be super fun. So make sure to stick around and check out that series with me here on Hack Tip. And be sure to check out our sister show Hack 5 for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you every week to trust your Technolust. <laughs>